Hello there, fellow Sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. So the Oscars happened, CODA won Best Picture, yeah, there was the usual political grandstanding, boo, a meme was born, and Will Smith hit rock bottom. I'm Pastor Shane, I'll give the fight breakdown today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So the Oscars the other night started off exactly as one might expect, with a whole lot of cringe. Serena Williams and Venus Williams opened the Oscars in honor of their hometown of Compton. Which is weird, because the central plot of King Richard is about getting the girls the heck out of Compton, which is depicted in the film as a dangerous, gang-infested hellhole with bad tennis courts. But not only was there Compton pride, but of course there was the obligatory gay pride. Well, we're gonna have a great night uh, tonight, and for you people in Florida, we're gonna have a gay night. Gay, 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 gay. Okay, groomer. But surprisingly, this bold, stunning, and brave statement didn't prevent Governor DeSantis from signing HB 1557 into law. And I don't know, but I doubt that anyone who is actually watching the Oscars is going to be super duper triggered by someone saying gay. We also were treated to a visit from Ellen Page as a living demonstration of the desperate need for laws like HB 1557. But obviously the biggest moment of the night came here. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. Keep the wife's name out your mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. In 94 years of the Oscars, we've seen plenty of robbery, like when Gosford Park won Best Original Screenplay over Memento, but we've never seen an assault. And with that, a meme was born, but it has also spurred a number of hot takes from blitheringly idiotic ones like this. Chris Rock's one joke was rooted in misogynoir texturism and ableism, degrading a black woman in a room full of her peers on live TV. The fact y'all don't see that as violent is beyond me. Seems like a lot of things are beyond you, like dictionaries and high school diplomas. Okay, that was mean, but it wasn't violence. Violence is physical force intending to hurt, damage, or kill. Jokes are words intending to make people laugh. Slight difference. Now, if he was slapping him because the joke was dated and lame, okay, harsh but fair. But ableism is the problem here? People are actually suggesting the joke went too far because Jada has a medical condition. Okay, it's alopecia. It's not exactly like she's losing her hair because of chemo. And believe me, there are plenty of people who struggle with growing hair. But we get up every morning and we look in the mirror and... I'm sorry, I thought I could talk about this. But on the other hand, we do see in scripture that when a person gets mocked for their baldness, those mockers get eaten by bears. There really should be more sermons on this passage. I'll have to talk to Pastor Ryan about a new sermon series. But I think the single most ridiculous take comes courtesy of Forbes. In this article, Will Smith, a black man, slapping Chris Rock, another black man, is blamed on white supremacy. Some argue that this is not about Will Smith and Chris Rock being black, or Will Smith setting black people back. This is about a much larger, systemic issue rooted in white supremacist culture designed to police the behavior of blacks amongst the who's who in Hollywood and beyond. Respectability politics suggest that equity and fair treatment require that black people, both inside and outside of Hollywood, conduct ourselves in a manner deemed acceptable to whites. Furthermore, expressing any emotion other than complacence, apathy, or agreeance directly violates those norms, disqualifying black people from receiving the same equitable treatment that whites enjoy as a birthright. And sadly, there is a large group of blacks who have internalized this toxic messaging. 
Not to be outdone, The Guardian also adds its dumbest take with an article entitled, White rage about Will Smith's slap is rooted in anti-blackness, its inequality in plain sight. Quote, I also find it hard to believe that the same white audiences who consume violence against black people on screen to an almost fetishistic degree and are quite happy to have the Academy reward these gratuitously violent projects year after year are so distraught about an open palm slap. Again, this kind of performative pearl clutching is only ever reserved for black men who mess up. So being somewhat perturbed about a black man slapping another black man on national television is racist, and the notion that you shouldn't assault someone over a G.I. Jane joke is just white decency standards impressed unfairly upon black people. If that's your takeaway, I think you might have been slapped one too many times. But The Guardian continues, This kind of punching down on black women remains typical of many black male comedians who, like the rest of the world, don't see black women's struggles and experiences as real or legitimate. Punching down may not have been the best word choice. But why exactly do black comedians specifically not see black women's struggles as real and legitimate? Don't they have black mothers and black wives and black daughters too? How did this Guardian author, a black man, receive this special insight and knowledge? Don't know, but he continues, This lack of care for black women also partly explains why people were so taken aback by the image of Smith standing up for his wife in that way. The world is so used to seeing black women as unworthy of being protected and fought for that it can't see any merit to Smith's actions or the emotions that spurred them. That's one theory. We're taken aback because we're not used to seeing black women as worthy of being protected. Or, just spitballing here, uh, maybe we're taken aback because we're not used to seeing assault at an award show. And to this notion of standing up and protecting his wife, I don't agree with the violence is never the answer, folks. It really depends on what the question is. Jesus himself has a pretty notable violent outburst. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Righteous jealousy and love for the Father prompted Jesus to fashion a whip and chase people out. Violence can be the answer depending on the question. And defending your family can be an appropriate place to exercise some of that violence. But Will Smith is not exactly jumping in front of a bullet here. It was a joke. If he wants to demand satisfaction and it's dueling pistols at dawn, okay. You know, in some ways our world would probably be a little more civilized if we brought back dueling. We'd all be a little bit more polite, a little less likely to post that snarky comment online if there was a reasonable chance that it could lead to a duel to the death. But that's not what we have here. You know, it's a well-established fact that Jada and Will Smith have an open marriage. You can't really play the honor card when you lost it like 15 years ago. Oh, you can sleep with my wife, you just can't joke about her hair, is a weird kind of standard. That's like, okay, you can treat my car like it's a bonus round in Street Fighter, but don't you dare tease me about my vanity plate. Dated reference, but we're doing G.I. Jane jokes, so. The point is, to defend someone's honor, uh, you have to have some. And I think the reality is the joke that broke Will Smith wasn't Chris Rock's, it was this one. Will Smith, um, you're married, but you know what? You're on the list and looks like Jada approved you, so you get on up here. Get on up here. <laughs> Will Smith, you're on I think a joke about the open marriage might have rubbed them the wrong way and made them a little more sensitive to perceived slights. This is not a good marriage. It's not a healthy marriage, and so it really shouldn't be that surprising when we see unhealthy externalities. At any rate, as fate would have it, Will Smith won the Best Actor Award and proceeded to give an incoherent speech about being God's vessel and sharing love by slapping Chris Rock in the face. He then went on to apologize to everyone except the person that he physically assaulted.
Now, apparently, Will Smith recently did apologize to Chris Rock, which is good, that's the right thing to do, and Chris Rock turned the other cheek, which I think is also good. No charges were filed, and it doesn't look like any lawsuit is coming. The real shame here is that a multimillionaire was assaulted by another multimillionaire. I mean, come on, can a lower class guy get a break? I'd take a slap of that settlement money. And with that in mind, I wrote some jokes. Your wife is so bald, she looks like Lex Luthor, if Lex Luthor were evil enough to be in an open marriage. What's the difference between Jada Pinkett Smith and a cue ball? A cue ball is white and not in an open marriage. All right, I better stop there. But as G.K. Chesterton once said, joking is undignified. That is why it is so good for one's soul. I think we can take ourselves far too seriously, which is why I think joking and teasing can be good for our souls. But it's also dangerous. The Bible warns us about that. There's a way in which it can become nasty. But even good-natured joking can hit us the wrong way if it hits a point of insecurity. The Smith marriage is a bad one. It's unhealthy, it's fragile, and not strong enough to stand up to a joke. Well, if you or Will Smith want to find me, you can locate me on the major socials, join my author's Facebook page, like, subscribe, rate, review, leave a comment, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Mm -hmm.